I've never really been satisfied with how the front of the house is incorporated into my Halloween yard display. So I've come up with a couple, three ideas this year that I'm going to work on and kind of alter the appearance of the front, make it look more of a graveyard cemetery scene because this isn't scary. These big square black holes of windows are going to get a, a dressing over. And the gutter line is going to get an ornamentation on it. Um, you've probably seen in Victorian homes where they have a roof line, the rooftop cresting. Um, I've got a decorative piece I'm going to work on and install those on the gutters. Um, in the past I've been hanging some kind of burlap creepy cloth from the gutters, but this year I'm going to use this image I got and I'm going to make a template and you can see I've started working on that here on this thin piece of wood. I'm going to cut out this template and then I am going to use my foam cutter table and cut this out in foam and run this along the length of the top of my gutters. So this is the enlargement I ended up making and I'll use that to create my uh, template with. So I've cut out one piece of paper um, that looks pretty similar to what I got off of the picture there and um, that's what I used as my guide to mark my lines here and I tried even though I folded it and tried to match it up really nicely the edges aren't quite right so I'm going to show you a little trick that I did to make this template kind of lined up and look nicer okay so to get a consistent look all the way across just taped it down here at the bottom and so I would line it up, I would just line the bottom edge up with my blank piece of wood and draw my line and so that the profiles would match up because they're not quite exact on each side just flip one side and fold it over and then all these edges will match up and this will look similar and it won't look kind of odd so then I would do the same thing there so after I get this cut out with the jigsaw um, I'm going to get some nails, I'm going to have to find something shorter than these, these are like an inch or two inch. Just going to drive them up through the wood on one side and then I'm just going to press the foam onto the piece of wood so that when I'm running it through the, the hot wire here it's not going to slip and, and give me some weird shapes. These are pretty big so I think they'll look well from a distance. They're about they're going to be about 12 inches tall and I think about, yeah, about eight and a half inches wide. That ought to work nicely. Okay then, so I've um, got my template cut out and I've sanded all the edges smooth so when I run it along the wire on my hot wire table um, it doesn't catch. So now I'm going to add these little um, three quarter inch wire brads and I'm just going to nail them through the back side and uh, then I'll be able to flip it over and the foam will just stick right to it and it won't slip and slide around while I'm trying to cut it on the table. Okay, so now when I get my uh, eight foot by one foot sections of foam to send through the table, I have a nice place for it to just stick right to my template. It's not going to slip around and I'll get a nice smoother looking one than this one. That's a little raggedy. That was just freehanding it just to see how it would work. But uh, just about ready to roll here. Okay, my foam cutting table is all ready to go and I've clamped on this guide which I've set at a distance of 12 inches from the hot wire cutting wire. Um, this guide is going to make it a lot easier for me to slide what are going to be four foot by eight foot panels of foam and get eight foot by one foot 
sections, you know, strips off of it. Um, these strips I'm going to use to tack onto my template, and then I'm going to be able to carve out my decorative cresting shapes. That will be my final project before painting and, you know, uh, aging. So, looking forward to it. At this point, I thought I should take a moment and do a brief overview of my hot wire table. But I'm not going to turn this into a tutorial because what I did, I learned from a couple other videos. I'll try and put the links on this video or the description area be below. The best educational and product resource I found came from a site called Jacobs Online. It's jacobs-online.biz and this I'll, I'll post a copy of my invoice in case you're curious about um, what I ended up buying. Um, this site is clear and informative on how to select components and construct your power supply, which this is mine right here. Uh, it's important to follow the instructions which they also include with your order so that you build and protect your circuit correctly. Alright, so the power coming through the garage flows through this cord flows through this fuse. Don't skimp on a fuse. You want to protect your transformer in case you overload it. You don't want it to short circuit. Then the power goes through your dimmer switch. You want to control the power that's going into your transformer so you don't overload that. So the transformer then is hooked up to this nickel chromium wire. The nichrom wire, this is a resistance wire and as a resistance current it heats up and that's what allows you to melt the foam. And the other end, one end is one end is attached to the wire. The other end comes out and just runs back through into the house current, and that completes the circuit. I've got all of my foam strips cut and ready to go. I've got a couple shorter lengths, so I'm going to start with that and see how this works out. It's time to tack this strip to my template and carve out some cresting. Okay, so with these longer pieces, since my template is only so long, all I have to do is lift it off, move it over, tap it down. When it's all lined up, I'm good to go again. Carved out like mad. Boy, that did take a while actually, but thank God for that hot wire table. I've got eight of these eight foot long sections and four five foot long sections, and that should be more than enough to cover the gutter and maybe a little excess. And then you can kind of see over there to the right, I've got a, started on the windows a while back. And this is kind of a mock-up I have right now. Um, so that'll be another video later. We'll go into more detail about that. All right, I just placed this up on the uh, garage gutter just to get an idea what it's starting to look like. Uh, this is just a little four, maybe five foot section. So. Uh, once I uh, come up with the installation plan, which I kind of already know what I'm going to do, but um, those will set a little deeper in the gutter. They won't be standing so tall, but um, if you can imagine that running along the length of the front of the house, I think it's going to look pretty dang cool. Okay, well I think I'm just going to end it right here. I'm probably going to make this part one of part two. 
So this was all of the preparation and cutting out, and I'll just save the, the painting installation for another time. But uh, this went pretty well. We went from this printout to this template to this carved out imitation cresting. So I'm looking forward to painting this and aging it. Maybe break a few of these, and that'll look really kind of creepy up there on the gutter. One thing I learned about using the hot wire table was to have this template side down on the table, with the wire running up against it. I just got a cleaner cut that way. Um, I tried it first the other way. I don't know if you can tell, but got some really, really ugly edges. Just weird stuff because the wire just wouldn't run straight if I had the wood laying on top of the foam. So I had to lay the template down on the board and just kind of feel feel along. And it worked out a lot better. I got a lot cleaner edges than this. This is an ugly scrap piece. It's my test piece, I guess. I'll paint, use that for paint experimenting. Yeah, you can see nice, nice edges. Straight, flat, you know, a little rough, but that's fine. It's, it's a Halloween decoration. Uh, another thing I learned is not to turn up the current too much on the uh, hot wire table. Um, I'd had already tested, it had a preset position, and a couple times I accidentally went beyond that. Um, you know, it cuts easier, but what happens is the resistance wire heats up more gets a hot spot on it, eventually softens and breaks. So I had to replace that a couple times, but um, I bought a 30 foot length of uh, the nich nichrome wire, you know, six bucks. So it's good to have a little backup in case something snaps. And I don't want to put you out of, put you out of production for another week. Although uh, Jacobs Online was very quick about filling my order. They, I ordered, they probably filled it within hours and I had it within a day or two. Um, so, in the meantime, I don't know when I'll get to painting this, but I'd like to start on this window covering for those big black hole square windows that I have on the living room and dining room. This is the image I got. Sorry, I'm crawling around, but um, another, another photo off the uh, line. And I just kind of took me a while to do some measurements and kind of duplicate it. But so far, this is what I have laid out. And... Um, so I think I like it. I'll do another. I'll do another video of me cutting pieces and showing you how I did it, and then um, I got to figure out a way to install that. <laughs> that might be a little trickier. Okay. Well, that's it for now. Part one over. I don't know when I'll get to part two, so be patient.